<laughs> okay, let me just work through the questions. So the first question, it says, suppose you have some coffee mug with a circular cross section and vertical side. Okay, that's a cylinder um, with the base of a circle, uniform radius. What is it? Inside radius, uh, if it holds this much coffee, when filled to a depth, uh, I'll just say this is the entire depth of um, this much uh, height of water or, or of coffee, but it says assume coffee has the same density as water. Okay. Oh, it's uh, such a roundabout way of asking. So, so we know mass, we know height, and we are being asked for radius. Now, this is where you kind of have to work backwards. And this is the kind of the scenario where I'll say, you know, when people tell you that you don't have to memorize things in math or physics, ignore that. Because memorizing things really helps you with the problem solving. Because um, especially as you are facing a question that you might not have seen before, it really helps to have memorized formulas like this. Volume of a cylinder. Volume of a cylinder is the value, the area of the, the base, pi r squared for circle, times the height, h. Because if you have a formula like this memorized, then you can transfer um, your wanting to know what the radius is to, okay, wanting to know what the volume is. And once you make the connection from radius to volume, because you see that once you know the volume, then from knowing high, you can get to the radius. Once you get uh, focus your attention on the volume, then you can now notice that you are given some information about density and uh, some information about, oh, so there, that must be where mass is coming in. Because we have this relationship that density rho, uh, this is the Greek letter, rho, is equal to uh, mass per volume. So if we know the density and we know the mass, then we have a way of calculating what the volume is. So, so, so re making these, uh, recognizing these things and uh, being ready to draw these necessary connections, it's a lot easier when you have these things memorized because then they are somewhere in your head and as you're looking at the question and thinking about it, eventually you'll get it. Oh yeah, I, th th these are the expressions I need. This, this is a kind of the problem solving where I can't give you a rigid set of steps as I have with uh, so things like a standard strategy. Um, here it's more creative and creative is a, a euphemism for difficult sometimes. <laughs> so, um, so, okay, with that, so I think I have enough here. I do need to write down the density of water. So density of water. Um, let me do this in grams per cubic centimeter. Since those are my units anyway, I'll just be careful in writing down all my units and make sure they simplify the way I expect it to. So with that, density of water in grams per cubic centimeter is one, one gram per cubic centimeter. If uh, this looks uh, suspicious, well, don't be so suspicious. This is just how we define the gram. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, it's one. Yeah. And it's kind of by design of how we define the unit of gram. So, okay, I have density of water. So um, I think that means I can solve this expression for volume. And when I do go through the algebra, what I have is volume is equal to mass per density. Okay. Um, and oh, oh, and this equation is already solved for volume. So let me plug that in here. And when I do that, let me write that down here, plugging this in as well. Then we get um, this uh, expression for volume, pi r squared h is equal to this expression for volume, mass per density. Okay, I think this is an expression where I can solve for the radius here. Let me just go through the algebra steps a little bit more carefully than I usually do and uh, 
and we'll see where we end up at. So, um, I'm going to multiply both sides by um, 1 over pi r. And this factor is designed to cancel out this pi r, sorry. Uh, 1 over pi, uh, multiply by 1 over pi h. And this factor is designed to cancel out pi and h. Uh, it has the effect of moving these things over to the right hand side. Uh, but I wanted to just tell you the justification of that shortcut that you might have learned previously. So, so with that, I get this expression r squared is equal to, that's the left hand side after pi and h have been canceled out from this multiplication. On the right hand side, I have m divided by rho times pi times h. Uh, I have multiplied 1 over pi h to the left hand side and to the right hand side. So to get rid of this square, I just need to take square root of both sides. So imagine taking square root of the whole thing. After having done that, I get r squared and square rooted, it's then r is equal to uh, square root of m over rho times pi times h. Okay, let me write out the um, the, the numbers that I'm going to be plugging in um, so that I can double check that units uh, simplify the way I expected them to. So 436 grams divided by 1 gram per cubic centimeter times pi times height of uh, 7.5 centimeter. Okay, the whole thing square rooted. Let's work out the unit. I have grams that cancel out. One factor of centimeter cancels out this to centimeter squared. So what I have is one over centimeter, uh, not one over, one over, one over <laughs> centimeter squared. So this nested fraction simplifies to centimeter squared that I take the square root of. So yes, all my units work out to be just centimeter in the end. So I can just uh, calculate the numbers without worrying about units. I just worked it out. Let me just calculate the numbers here. Um, so the numbers are, annoying. Um, okay, uh, 436 divided by one, I don't need to write that down, divide, and divided by pi, and divide by 7.5. So equal to that, I need to take the square root of that. So 4.3 centimeters is the radius of the water. 0.3 centimeter. So yeah, um, nothing too complicated once you kind of figure out what expressions are relevant here and, uh, and work through this bit of algebra.